Hello everyone and welcome to my monthly builds video. This is the builds video for December 2015. So today I'm going to be choosing parts uh, for a new computer. Actually for two new c computers because that is a hard thing to do for some people. Or maybe it's challenging. Or maybe it's fun. I think it's fun. But some people have a difficult time making their decisions when it comes to the parts they're going to put into a system. So that's why I make these uh, videos. Each month I create a couple builds. These are based on your votes and your feedback. Uh, I use PC Part Picker to choose them. Uh, so for December, I actually have, based on your feedback, a ridiculous Skylake 6700 based dream machine uh, with an over $9,000 price tag. Uh, and then to balance things out with that, I also have a $400 range AMD APU based system uh, that I will actually be building next week. So uh, remember to subscribe to my channel if you want to be the first to hear about it when I post that video. Excellent! I was going to show you guys 500 cool features of the Fractal Core 500 ITX case, but that would take way too long, so here are five. It's compact and sleek with a brushed front panel. It has surprisingly good water cooling support. It has big magnetic dust filters. It supports full-size ATX power supplies, and it has room for 170 millimeter tall CPU coolers. Click the sponsor link in the description for more information. So a few notes before we dive uh, right into the first builds parts list. Uh, first off, the cost I'm listing and the uh, the title and everything is for the, the system itself. That doesn't include the monitor, peripherals, and that kind of thing, unless I say otherwise, so bear that in mind if you are parting out a system. There are some extra costs involved, but oftentimes if you're a system builder, you might have those already lying around, that kind of thing. I also use PC Part Picker. Uh, it's easy to shop there, and they also have compatib com compatibility filters built in and that kind of thing. Um, and links, of course, to all this stuff is going to be down in the description on YouTube. Uh, big thanks to anyone who's watching this video live right now, because I am streaming it live on my Twitch channel. Um, you guys are going to have to wait for the links. I don't have them ready quite yet. Um, but speaking of interaction and stuff, and uh, why I chose the builds I'm doing today, is because I always ask you guys what builds you want to see. So uh, last month for November, I asked what PC builds you want to see for December. And as you can see, the i7, i7 6700K Skylake Dream Machine won right at the top. FX6300. Came in a close second there. Uh, I do want you guys to uh, vote for next month, though. So here, I can post this in chat. There you go. Um, so click that link in the description on the straw poll and uh, go ahead and vote. Oh, I, I meant to make this pick more than one, but I guess you only get to pick one this time. I got a farewell to AM3 Plus build since AM4 is coming out soon. Uh, maybe an 8350 or maybe even a 9590 build. Budget Skylake, uh, since you got those Skylake Pentiums that are now available that are super cheap. I think I have a search for them. Yeah, look, look you can get a G4400 Skylake Pentium for 65 bucks now, so I thought that might be interesting. Uh, 5960X, a PC gaming streaming system, more bang for the buck has well. If you want to go for some older, slightly older parts, um, we might go for that. So everyone post your, your votes there and that kind of thing. And uh, for, that, for now, I'm going to get right into this first build, which is, again, that 6700K Dream Machine. Uh, Dream Machine, for me, kind of harkens back to uh, reading Maximum PC, which is one of my favorite PC publications, at least in print, for quite some time. Um, and they always built a Dream Machine every year. So Dream Machine, for me, just means, like, going all out. But I'll be honest, if you're going to just like build a system and you're gonna make it like the most expensive system possible it's really not that hard you can go into a site like PC Part Picker or Newegg something like that you can sort it by max price you can choose all the most expensive hardware and then you can just build it with that I didn't quite do that um, I, I wanted it to be somewhat reasonable um, but that is why for example there are none of these SSDs in there I did find these last night Intel's four terabyte uh, Enterprise SSD, which is selling on Newegg right now for $10,000. So I could have dropped a few of these in there and be like, this is a $30,000 system. That would be awesome. Uh, no, I didn't do that. I tried to keep things slightly more reasonable. So uh, let's just, yeah, here's the build. Uh, this is a 6700K Skylake Dream Machine. Here are all the parts together. Um, and I'm going to be going over these just one at a time. But you can see the total price down here, $9,200. So again, somewhat reasonable uh yeah but anyway all right so first off of course we have the 6700k uh, which apparently is very hard to come by it's still out of stock in a bunch of places even at newegg which usually gets lots of allocation for cpus it's hard to find so i guess that might be a difficulty here is just getting your hands on a 6700k in general um but that's kind of the basis so of course those don't ship with cpu coolers um also i have my i have an i5 here this is like my example 
box, but we're actually working with an i7. Anyway, uh, so this is a Corsair Hydro Series H110i. Big, massive, uh, 280 millimeter cooler. Uh, it's Corsair. It's got this color scheme thing, so you can change the colors. Uh, these are just really high rated. Uh, they, they do a great job, and uh, I wanted water cooling in this as much as possible. I did briefly debate doing custom, like picking parts for a custom water cooling loop, but I decided not to for various reasons, but everything's still water cooled. Anyway, motherboard is a Maximus 8 Extreme motherboard from Asus, um, which you can get for $470. Very expensive motherboard um, at BNH, but they don't have good pictures, so here's the pictures on Newegg. Uh, this motherboard is, is it's an ROG motherboard, so Asus tends to do the, the kitchen sink with these and throws all kinds of stuff in there. But after looking at this and even deciding upon it, I realized there was a little bit of, there's going to be a little bit of controversy here. So you guys let me know in the comments what you think. Because Asus this year for the Maximus 8 Extreme, which is the their highest end Z170 board from what I understand, they didn't do a PLX bridge. So you can actually, you're actually only limited to two-way SLI here. You can do quad SLI if you do two dual GPU cards, but those don't even exist for the current generation yet. So yeah, um, I went with a two-way GPU configuration because of that. There are other boards out there that are crazier than this in, in the PCI Express area with uh, PLX bridges and that take your 16 lanes available on the 6700K and spread them out and give you more. That does introduce a bit of latency though. And even without asking JJ about this, I can tell you guys probably their reasoning was they looked at actual use cases and they said, you know what, people who are buying this platform tend to not go for more than two, maybe three graphics cards. And really, if you're going to go for more than that, you should go for the Extreme platform, uh, X99 LGA 2011-3, and, you know, go, go for that. So anyway. I still stuck with this board because there's still a crazy amount of, of features in here that Asus has wedged in. But let me know what you guys think. If, if for a dream machine build like this, you would go with the Asus, or if maybe you'd pick something like uh, the Gigabytes, uh, what is it, the gaming, the, yeah, whatever the, that, that $500 gigabyte board is that I have that I don't remember the name of off the top of my head. Um, hey, look, Newegg has tech experts that can help. No, thank you. Okay, uh, G Scale Riptos 5 Series. Again, this is a dream machine, so maximum amount of memory possible 64 gigs, 4 by 16 gig kit. And I just went with the fastest I could find pretty much. It's 400. This is actually kind of reasonable for DDR4, considering that these are 16 gig DIMMs. But PC uh, 3200 speed, I just I wanted fast and I wanted it to match, so there's your memory. Uh, storage. <laughs> storage, I'm a little crazy on. You might notice here, I have uh, what is this total? eight terabytes, nine terabytes, almost 10 terabytes of SSD in here. I did, uh, yes, for anyone mentioning, uh, if there's a delay, I'm gonna fix it in post. Uh, I did not put any mechanical drives in here, but you still have up to 10, or close to 10 terabytes of storage. And I tried to use as much of the uh, IO connectivity as I possibly could, so let's jump back to here. So first off, to fill in uh, your M.2 slot, because there's an M.2 there, uh, I got the Samsung 950 Pro. Uh, this is an M.2 2280 NVMe drive. This is super fast. It's black, and it will also match uh, with the motherboard. So I like that. Uh, for extra storage, and also to make use of the built-in U.2 port on that motherboard, I chose the Intel 750 series. Um, this is the one that's linked in the PC part picker thing, but they, for some reason, don't have the one link that I wanted to put, which is this one, the 2.5 inch version of this drive that works with U.2. So uh, this one's out of stock, I guess, but th that's the one I would go for. If you go for this one, it's a PCI Express expansion, uh, and it won't, I, I chose this specifically to go with the U.2, but again, PC part picker doesn't have that listed. Finally, I chose four Samsung 850 Pro two terabyte <laughs> SATA drives, because um, they're there. $880 each, but that's a lot of storage. Uh, two terabytes, and you could you could put these into a RAID configuration if you wanted to, uh, just connected na natively to the uh, Intel PCH. That'd be loads of fun. Anyway, maybe I go overkill with storage in some of these builds. Uh, for graphics cards, uh, I wanted the best of the best, so again, I went with the Titan X. 12 gigs uh, per, per card is really, I think, kind of the selling point here if you're really trying to justify that thousand dollar plus price tag and again wanted everything to be water cooled so EVGA's got the uh, hybrid version of these now that's got the included loop uh, with the 120 millimeter radiator and uh, two of these is really all you can fit uh, on the uh, Maximus 8 uh, Extreme so that's what I went with two 
that's reasonable, right? Uh, for we need a case to fit everything, so we got a Fantex Enthu series. This is the Enthu Primo. Uh, it's aluminum. Uh, it's actually not that crazy expensive. I was looking at some of the other more expensive cases uh, from Lian Lee, from Inwin. Uh, they have some good options there, but I wanted to make sure everything would fit in here without too much difficulty. And Enthu Primo is definitely a case that uh, gets a lot of positive feedback for just just how much how much stuff you can fit into it. It's really pretty insane. I don't know why new egg images aren't loading, but here, ah, yeah. There's tons of space in here. It's also EATX, so it will fit that motherboard. Uh, it's got space on the bottom as well as on the back for uh, your 120 millimeter radiators for those graphics cards, and uh, I think you'll be all set. Again, not the most expensive case. If you are looking for uh, other options in cases, or if you're just wondering what else I was considering as far as a really high-end case, the Cosmos 2 from Cooler Master is still uh, a very popular one, and then the 900D from Corsair is another one that's kind of right up in that range. There's some others as well, but um, again, I was here and there I was trying to be reasonable with this build. So uh, Finally, we needed a power supply, so again, uh, I went with titanium. If you're going titanium high wattage, you pretty much got the Corsair AX1500i. There's also the EVGA Supernova 1600 watt. Tough choice between those, but uh, this one is really well reviewed. It's just supposed to be kind of one of the top power supplies out there. Also goes with some of the other Corsair components in the build. If you want the EVGA, I think you'd be fine as well, to be perfectly honest. Um, all right, so let's move on to the next build. What do you guys think of that one? $9,200? Is anyone going to invest? I'll be honest, right here. Uh, I, would not, I would not in any way, shape, or form buy this system. I just wouldn't. Um, because it's 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 mainstream. It's it's uh it's using the 6700K. It's Skylake. Uh, I would do an X99 build if I was going to spend this much money. But hey, some people might do it. I don't know. There might be that little niche of the market who might actually spend that much money. Who knows? We need to find those people and and take their money or something. All right, let's move on to the more reasonable one here. This is a $400 AMD APU build. I ca I'm calling this the Minecraft Plus build because there's two kind of uh, factors to this. One is that I'm going to be building this. Two is that it's going to be a Christmas gift uh, for our nephew. Uh, and then three is going to be what he's doing with it, which is he wants a uh, computer to play Minecraft, and this should be able to do that without any problems. Uh, and then he also is potentially, he's still fairly young, but he might in the future want to like get into the whole PC building thing. So I wanted to build him a, a system that, you know, if he did want to in the future, he could dive in there and add some stuff. And this uh, is an APU system, so it's going to be using the integrated graphics from the A107850K. So adding a graphics card to this in the future, if he like graduates to some higher end games or something like that, could be a great option. Also, pro tip for anyone who was watching my video that I did roughly at this time of year one year ago, I also did a 7850K build, and I was looking at that, I was like, oh, well, we are coming to the end of this run of processors from AMD, uh, I think both on the APU and the standard CPU side, so um, yeah, next year we're expected to see more. One other thing about this is I said this was a $400 build, and that's because uh, there's a mail-in rebate on, uh, on what? Where's the mail-in rebate? There's a mail-in rebate on something. And there's also the fractal power supply, which was $45 yesterday and is now 70 So that jumped up. Let me show you guys, though, how to find a different power supply if you don't want to use this fractal one. I also have the fractal power supply already, so um, I, I, I'm going to use it. But if you guys want something more reasonably priced, if, if that power supply doesn't drop again, PC part picker over here on the list, just go to choosing a power supply. Use the filters on the left side. So all I did was change the wattage range from 400 to 650 watts, which is about the range I want. I want it to be able to support a discrete graphics card in the future if it comes to that. Um, and then I also went with 80 plus bronze, which I think is uh, kind of the best bang for your buck with also an, an 80 plus rated power supply. And then I sorted by lowest price. And here you can see the Corsair CX430 uh, Builder Series power supply, which is insanely popular, which was another very close chance for this. And you can still get that for $40 to $45, uh, whether you want the modular or non-modular. There's some other ones in here, Seasonic power supplies I like, EVGA's got some, uh, Roseville is generally pretty good, just uh, make sure you check that feedback rating. So lots of options down here in the, say, $40 to $50-ish range for power supplies, if the one you were looking for doesn't isn't on sale anymore. So anyway, that's 
me justifying this still being a $400 build. Okay, uh, A107850K, Gaveri Quad Core. Yes, this processor has been out since last year, uh, but yes, it is still a pretty viable option, I think, for now, especially if you're looking at something that has some pretty good graphics performance, um, but not necessarily it breaks the bank. So $130 for this right now. Um, and this is, again, one of the fixed items that I already had to use for the build. Uh, of course, I needed a uh, motherboard to go along with that. So ASRock has this one. This is an A78M chipset motherboard, um, which uh, isn't the highest end, but it can still do some overclocking. Um, it's a nice little board as far as the feature set goes. Uh, it's got your USB 3.0. It's got uh, your video outs there, including a couple HDMIs. And it's even got some USB 3.0 uh, and some of those sort of higher end features um, to get up with the connectivity. Also, of course, that uh, expansion slot PCI Express means that you can uh, add a graphics card in the future, which I want them to be able to do. Um, memory, I did a similar search to the one I just showed you guys with, um, uh, with the power supply. I drilled down to an eight gig, two by four gig kit, and I wanted faster memory speed. So I was looking at 2133 to 2400, even higher than that, as long as it stayed reasonably priced. That is how I settled on this kit from G-Skill. It's only $39 uh, on Newegg right now. Of course, there's a few other options in the 35 to $45 range that could go. Uh, I decided for an SSD. I want this to be very fast. Uh, I want it to feel very fast, even though it's using a slightly older APU processor. So SSD is the way to go if you want to do that. And I also wanted to reasonably reasonable capacity, so 240 gigs. Uh, $65 for this I think is a very reasonable price. You could get, you could have gotten these even less if we were doing this a week and a, week and a half ago or so during Black Friday sales, but um, 60, 65 for that, still a very nice price. Of course, the Fractal Design Core 500 um, is, is a great little case. I have one here, I'm gonna be building in it. I've already done a little bit of B-roll on it, so um, I can already say, nice, solid case. Uh, fairly inexpensive, it's 73 bucks over on Amazon, but on Superbot, Superbiz, Superbuys, I don't know, they have it for cheaper. 55 after a promo code, but of course it's out of stock. <laughs> yeah, that's how the that's how the cookie crust crumbles or something like that. Anyway, um, lastly, power supply, Integra M450 watt. This is a nice solidly made little uh, 80 plus bronze power supply from Fractal. Stays pretty quiet. Um, I'm actually gonna be building with the 750 watt version because again, that's what I have, but the 450 uh, would do just fine for this little build and would even have enough juice to power a graphics card beyond that as well. So there you, go, there you guys have it, my two builds. Uh, one insanely high powered and high priced, one much more reasonable and reasonably priced. Uh, thanks to all you guys who have jumped into chat to say hello during my little uh, production here, my live stream. To all you guys who are watching on YouTube in the future, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel, hit the like button. Uh, down in the description again, there's links to these builds. There's also links to my store where you can do stuff like buy t-shirts. I also have mugs. I also have uh, some sales going on for some hoodies and some shirts. And there's also some new logo stuff. So check all that out because it's it's absolutely fabulous. And there's still time to shop before the, the before Christmas. Anyway, uh, thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.